happy Easter to all of you. It's so nice to see you here this morning, in this beautiful, beautiful Easter morning. And um, I welcome you to the Dover Church, an open and affirming congregation where no matter who you are or where you are on your life's journey, you are most welcome here. And we hope that you uh, received a bulletin on the way in so you can participate in our worship. I'd just like to make a couple of announcements before we begin. Um, you'll see that there's a prayer card in there. And the purpose of that will become apparent during the uh, sermon, but there'll be an opportunity for everyone to participate in our prayers. And also, we are taking a special offering today to help support our clinic in uh, Vila in Haiti. Uh, we partner with them. And so the, we'll be talking a little bit about, later in the service about that, but there are, are uh, envelopes in the pew racks for, uh, for those that are coming later in the worship. Um, our chair of choir has already sung. I don't think there are any announcements to come from the congregation this morning. No? Then I invite all of you who are comfortable and able to please rise and join with me in the call to worship, which you'll see printed on page two of your bulletin. Praise God who brings life out of death and hope out of despair. Praise God who brings Jesus Christ from the dead. Praise God who gathers up the fragments left by our destruction and creates new possibilities. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Our hymn of adoration this morning is number 204. Come, you faithful, raise the strain.
Good morning. <coughs> Friends, please join me in the unison prayer for illumination found on page three of your bulletin. O oh Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our reading from the Gospel of Jesus Christ is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead and indeed is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded to you. And remember... I am with you always, to the end of the age. The word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. Let us pray. O oh Lord, open my lips that my mouth might show forth your praise. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. You know, Christmas and Easter are these two times every year that come and go so quickly that we really have time to unpack them. And yet they are the two best good newses of the year. And as church folk, we tend to take it for granted what's the good news of Easter? That Jesus was raised from the dead? Well, that's fine. But what does that have to do with any of us, here and now. And the good news is, is that through Jesus, we see the power of resurrection for our lives, in our lives, that we might live the resurrection. And by live it, I mean to believe it, as in to be living it. We find out for ourselves whether it's true or not, not just then and there, but here and now. We use this word true a lot. 
But by definition, true when referring to a person means steadfast, loyal, faithful, or trusty. So with the Easter story, true, can we depend upon Jesus to show us the way? When true refers to an event, it means agreeing with reality, representing the thing as it is. So does the resurrection really happen in real life? And to, do, to know the answer to that for each of us, we need to try living it and see where the truth is. We need to find out what eternal life is and what it lives like. We need to find out what being raised from the dead is and what it lives like. Find out how it's done, what we have to do, how we do it. Now the good news is we don't actually have to do anything at all. In fact, it comes to us if we just live long enough to experience the hard places of life. You know, loss, death, divorce, betrayal, addiction, failure, disappointment, all the hardship and pain and suffering that life brings to everyone eventually. It's just part of life. But it's what happens next after those hard places that makes all the difference. Now, if you know what I'm talking about, maybe when you were in that place, maybe for some reason, like you heard it in church, so you figured you'd give it a try. You trust. Or maybe you have a good friend who told you their story, their resurrection story of coming from dark into light, life, death into life. And that gave you hope. Or, as it often is for so many of us, maybe you had nowhere else to turn. No other options, nowhere further to go down. <coughs> and as actually happened in my life, it was just grace. It was pure luck. I didn't even realize what was happening until after the fact when I said to myself, oh, how about that? That's what the resurrection lives like. You see, in life, we have a choice. We can run away. And by run away, I mean run into an addiction or into isolation, something that separates us from life. We can give up and just die. And by die, I don't mean physically die, but spiritually die, as in give up on love and life and hope and happiness. Or we can call on God for help and allow ourselves to just uncoil into the disaster where we find ourselves because there's nothing we can do about it not try to muscle our way through it by force of willpower, grim determination or resignation, but rather uncoil with hopeful and expectant trust in God's salvation while we wait for the resurrection to happen in our lives. And then, and I know this to be true as in it reflects reality as I've lived it, it just happens. The first time for me, I only noticed it after the fact. But I noticed that suddenly life was no longer so gray and dark and hopeless, but was livable again. And I said, oh, I've been raised. I've been saved. And the point of all of this, <coughs> the gift, the good news is that once you know what it is, the next time the cross of life is winking at you, you're able to deal with it less fearfully, 
less anxiously. Or, as many of you in this room are so very young and maybe have never been to a dark place before, you can move forward in your lives with confidence rather than fearful of all of the what-ifs. Why? Because you know that God saved you the last time, and God will do it again because God is faithful. And you wait. You wait for your stone to be rolled away. Now, if what I'm saying sounds foolish to you, if it means foolish in a lighthearted way, then yes. Because so many of us go through life with heavy hearts and heavy spirits and low expectations. But once you have actually known the truth of the power of God to save you, and I do mean the power because when you've been in the darkness of loss or failure or depression or illness or incapacitation or addiction or any of the other things that come to all of us, and then you're on the other side. You felt the power that drew you out of such a great darkness. And my friends, the one thing I can tell you is don't write it off to the strength of your willpower or just pure luck because luck can change and your willpower can give out at just the wrong time. But if you trust that it's God, then you know it can happen again. And once God pulls it off for you a few times, you know it when you see it. You expect it when you need it. You trust it when you're in it. And so you don't fear everything and run, but you face everything and rise. <coughs> this is the power of the resurrection. The real good news of Jesus Christ, that God can reach into whatever dark, painful, messy place we find ourselves in and can roll away the stone and raise us up to newness of life. Amen. Jack's about to read a passage from the Apostle Paul about the power of the resurrection, and you'll notice that Paul is speaking in the future tense, striving on towards this. And that's where these prayer cards come in. If you'd care to share anything confidentially, not like, hi, my name's Max Olmsted, and I used to be on heroin, and um, <laughs> thank you, God. That's not true, but <laughs> I would edit it anyways for you um, if, uh, if you did do that. Um, but the point is, imagine if your story is just the story that someone else in this room needs to hear this morning, that you came back from the other side, or maybe that we lift up something that you need praying for, you're in a dark place now. So Jack's going to read us a passage from Philippians. You can jot these down while the choir sings, and then our ushers will come by while they're singing to collect the cards. From Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 3. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. 
Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. God of ceaseless new beginnings, we rejoice that through your powerful love, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. In the resurrection, you have shown that neither trouble nor persecution, hardship nor poverty, danger nor death can separate us from your love. Free us to trust in you that we may live in the confidence of your children. In the resurrection, you were victorious over sin, violence, and oppression. Free us to risk ourselves in the struggle for justice and peace, that we may be your partners in restoring all creation to your will. In the resurrection, you have opened the gates of eternal life. Free us from the fear of death, 
that we may serve you with courage. For we have seen the resurrection. When we looked back on the quarrels we used to have with our children and know that they are behind us. When I survived and overcame thyroid cancer. When I forgave my brother who sought to harm me. In the love of my family. In overcoming a difficult childhood. In finding someone to make dinner with my aging parents on Sunday nights. When I was able to forgive my ex-husband and myself through a divorce and able to appreciate each other as parents. With gratitude for love from my family and friends in the face of job crisis. When I feel God's love and care in my life. Watching my children grow. As my broken hand is slowly healing as family members have prevailed against cancer while others have not. For all the comfort and love I feel in this place with these people. By becoming more forgiving, more gentle, less judgmental. As my hope continues through the darkness of work, life, kids, winter, depression. when I healed from an incurable illness. For me, it is the calmness I may feel that I am cared for. In the resurrection, you bring new possibilities out of hopeless situations. Free us from all despair that we might bring your hope to those who have lost heart, particularly those who mourn the loss of loved ones. For Joe recovering from surgery. In the health of my son. For Sam undergoing the cardiac procedure this morning. For my spouse, strength and power during a time of loss. For people in marriages for freedom to make choices. For Caleb and Natalie as they get married. For a dear friend who's in a dark place. And Hollis and all of our children, they may have confidence to face everything and rise. For peace without fear. Through deepening my faith, living Christ's mission through volunteer work. For grace in family life. Through the presence of Jesus Christ among us, Draw us into a community of freedom, hope, and love. Work your new creation among us that we may serve you without fear. God most holy, God most loving, God most knowing. We praise your name through ever, forever. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, who teaches us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's sing, Thine is the Glory, number 214. <laughs>
So th those of you who know me um, know that I am given occasionally for the purposes of sermons to hyperbole. But in case you thought that I was talking metaphorically about resurrection, we're about to talk about our special offering. We're, our gifts quite literally are raising people from the dead. Uh, we support a clinic in Haiti People who otherwise would have no health care whatsoever. Children dying because they don't have vitamins. Mothers dying in childbirth. Diseases that we overcome quite easily, laying waste to entire neighborhoods. Um, and so Beth's going to talk to us for a moment. Um, if you've been here before, you know that we do this work. Um, but I'll leave the rest to her. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Easter. Several times throughout the year, our church takes special offerings that are above and beyond our normal Sunday worship offering. And these go, the money that we collect goes to support different groups um, that we support on e either from a mission perspective or for outreach. And for Easter, we are supporting the St. Boniface Haiti Foundation, in particular the Vila Clinic. And I was really pleased when I went to Haiti to St. Boniface that I had an opportunity to actually visit the clinic. It's hard to imagine um, this small, rural, tiny, you know, clinic that has one full-time doctor, you know, plus a social service resident, two nurses, and four nurses assistants. And they handle 13,284 patient visits this past year. Pretty incredible, the work that they do. Max, had, I put a poster together. I hope you'll take a minute to take a look at it. To get to this clinic is an amazing journey. What would take us 10, 15 minute drive takes over an hour and a half. You have to ford a stream. You, you go up through these dirt roads that have gigantic rocks in the middle of them. It's just the bumpiest ride I've ever been on. And at the top of this hill with this amazing view, is this be beautiful little clinic that we help support. And as Max mentioned, <coughs> these are individuals who ha would no longer, would not have health care if we didn't help to support them. In 2016, there were 151 babies were born, which was less than, a little bit more, uh, less than 13 a month. Um, so far in 2017, they'd ha they've had 48 babies born in the first three months, which is 16 a month. So they're it's, it's showing that the, the word is getting out that the good work that this little clinic is doing. They have prenatal vi visits that they take care of. They had 1,885 emergency cases. Um, it's, it's incredible. They, there's a high prevalence of, of typhoid in the, in the area, and some of the cases are quite chronic. They see new typhoid cases nearly every day so that the work that we support through this little clinic is vital to the people that live in this area. So there are envelopes in your pews. If you feel moved to give, um, we hope that you'll give generously. If you're not prepared to give today but would like to, there are also envelopes out in the back. You can take one of these with you. You can also go out to our website and make a donation through the website as well. And we thank you so much for your support. And just to give you an idea of the scope of what's possible through your gift, um, you know, Haiti, there, there is no running water or electricity. It's all localized to each site. So $1,000 buys a month worth of electricity, the generator that runs to give electricity. You can't do medicine nowadays without electricity. Um, $2,000 pays the salaries of one doctor and one nurse for a month. So 1,100 patient visits um, for a month. That's a lot of people. Um, so we invite you to give as you feel moved. Our ushers wait upon you while our choir sings to us.
are, O oh Lord, with these gifts in our lives offered to you. And we ask your blessing upon them and upon us that these gifts may wing their way to Haiti and in the hands of the doctors and nurses there perform great works of love. And that as we hear the stories of new life and resurrection, our hearts may be warmed to know that you are at work in the world. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of parting this morning is Christ the Lord is risen today, number 205.
Go forth from this place in peace. Have a blessed Easter. Try living the resurrection and see the new life that comes your way. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance this day upon you and give you that peace. Amen. Thank you.